Good morning, my wonderful church family. Yes, I am Chris. Um, it is great to be here this morning uh, and to be part of God's work and God's kingdom here on the Wirral. Um, it was also great to be able to worship with you. Um, and I want to begin by saying thank you to our worship team this morning for all the work they put into practice, for their choice of songs, uh, for their striving to hear what God is saying to them uh, throughout the week as they pick those songs. Thanks to Rick for his leadership at this meeting, his openness to hear what God is prompting for us today, and his willingness to serve us, the church, in whatever way is needed. I want to thank our volunteers on the welcome team this morning. Um, Denise did the welcome rover. We had Carolyn on the front door. Thank you very much um, for showing us that God-given care and that warm welcome. Um, Nikki was doing the watchman role today, um, her willingness to oversee safety throughout the meeting although I think Dave might have picked that up at the moment. Um, I want to say thank you to our fabulous youth team on duty today. So we've got um, Jerry and uh, Danielle for doing Sparks. We've got Abby and Yvonne in Flames. We've got Benji, Julie, Sheena in Firestarters and Trailblazers, that combined work outside. Thanks to them for bringing stories of God to our children and for teaching them about what God has done in the past and what that means for them in the present and the future. Thanks to them for the work they've given up to prepare for this work that our children will be blessed by. Thanks to Dave on the camera today, making sure that our meeting can be viewed by our family who can't be here physically. We're thinking of you. And thank you to Josh on the desk uh, for giving us sound and vision that supports our worship. And also thank you to our drinks team, Sue and Chantel. Where would we be without coffee or tea, or biscuits, or even all three. Um, thank you for working both before the service and after the meeting to provide us not only with a hot drink, but also with a smile and a few words to make us feel at home. Oh, thank you for lungs and the ability to express ourselves as small people in every circumstance. Um, so that was a whole lot of thanks. Well, there was a purpose behind it allowing me to practice what I'm about to preach. A few months ago, Lynn, thank you, Lynn, shared a testimony with us about her prayer life, and in it she used the phrase, attitude of gratitude, which I believe God wants me to share with you today. It fits in well with our latest teaching series we've been blessed with about who Jesus is and what should be our response to those aspects of our Lord. And by spending the time to thank our brothers and sisters for what they're doing today. I've been specific and open in my gratitude, trying to give it time and thankness to breathe. So this morning, I want to share with you three, no surprise there perhaps, key points about having an attitude of gratitude. So firstly, why do we have it? What, what, why, why, why? Secondly, how do we get better at it? And thirdly, what flows from it. And you'll be glad to know this is a fully interactive session. So there will be pens and paper, they're at the front waiting for you, uh, and maybe even a bit of talking to each other, um, all taking place before 12 o'clock. So before we get into it, uh, let's pray together. Almighty God, thank you for wanting a relationship with us. Thank you for the want and for all sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that constantly works in our lives to make us more like Jesus. Thank you for the many ways that you teach us. And this morning, we pray that you would speak to us with the message you want us to hear. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so the first point then, why have an attitude of gratitude? Why do we need it? Well, let's get started with a short answer to all the questions, the why, what, and the how. And that answer is Jesus, okay? It's quite straightforward uh, and a deeper relationship with him. So job done, put the kettle on, um, we can have a drink now. Um, but as always, though, the key to our growth is in the unpicking of this truth, which we can work through together. So on to the first part then, and why do we have a need an attitude of gratitude? Because if we know Jesus, and we've sung about it this morning, then we have so much to be thankful for. 
we spent the last few months hearing about who Jesus is. And here's just a few reminders. We start off, he is our Lord. He's not a lunatic, he's not a liar. And that means his call to us to follow him needs to be taken seriously and completely with our whole. He is the great commissioner, calling us to make disciples of all men with the tools he will give us. He's our great high priest, able to intercede for us with an almighty God because of the sacrifice that he made. He is the son of God and the son of man, uniquely able to understand everything we face and also able to give us the strength to see it through. He is the head of the church and our home. So wherever we are, however we feel, we can be reassured by knowing that we reside in him. He is the living stone, and whatever our circumstances, through his strength, we can live a life which glorifies God. He is the good shepherd who calls us by name, who protects us, who laid his life down for us, who shows us the way. He is the restorer of the kingdom of God, using us either directly in mission or indirectly as the salt of the earth to show people God's love for them. And then last week we learned from Dave that he is the true vine and he wants us to abide in him so he can grow us to be more like him. So with those reminders, having an attitude of gratitude should be easy, easy. And when we're together in church, caught up in worship, praying together, then it, it does feel easy-ish. But in the middle of the week, um, perhaps stuck in traffic with a flat tire in the rain, maybe not. And the danger is that's when a little bit of ungratefulness can start to creep in. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but have you ever been called ungrateful? Or have you ever felt that somebody in your life didn't appreciate something that you've done? All right, as some of you know, I used to work in uh, Denby and uh, Morrison's, and there was a small section of road on the hill leading into the town that was exactly two and a half cars wide. The half's importance, because it meant that when there was a parked car, somebody had to give way. Now, I traveled this road twice a day, five days a week, 46 weeks a year for four years. And I can tell you that every time I gave way to an oncoming car that just drove through without saying thanks, my blood pressure went up just a little bit because of my perceived ungratefulness from them. On the flip side, a wave of acknowledgement gave me renewed optimism about life, uh, made me feel a bit appreciated, and blessing both of us, I think, in the process. But you know, I'm not the only person to experience ungratefulness. Jesus also experienced ungratefulness, as we are told in Luke 17. Reading from verse 11, it says, Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, We're not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Can you imagine? The worst of all lives would be to be a leper. You were shunned by everyone. Living in isolation and poverty, you were feared and despised wherever you went. And then in an instant, you are healed, you are made whole, able to rejoin society, to love and be loved, and then to not thank the one who made this happen surely is a good definition of ungratefulness. And to make the point even more, Jesus highlights that it was a Samaritan, not even a fellow Jew, that came back to give thanks. Now, while most of us here don't have leprosy, we do live in a modern world. And while we are called to be in it and not of it, there is a danger to our attitude of gratitude through the media all around us. 
Let's consider for a moment about the adverts that we see that seep in, telling us we can't be happy until we have the latest car, the newest perfume, the shiniest jewelry, or the best tech. And yes, Denise, that was aimed at me. And the devious nature of these lies is that they condition people to never be grateful for what they have, because there's always supposedly something better to take its place, a never-ending cycle of ungratefulness. But you know, there's nothing new. Paul also writes to Timothy in his second letter, chapter 3, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, and a whole lot more in the next few verses, which is the exact opposite of how the kingdom of God should be. So why do we need it? Well, we can read from Thessalonians, the first letter, chapter 5. Rejoice always. We've sung that today. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Paul's not saying to give thanks for the circumstances. He's saying give thanks in all circumstances because that's God's will for us. And again in Colossians chapter 3, whatever you do, whether in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, I think giving thanks is a key part of having this attitude of gratitude. And our thanks can start off with us appreciating what has happened. And the word appreciate has several meanings, uh, but there's two that I really want to focus in on because they'll help our understanding. The first meaning is to recognize the full worth of. And the second is to be grateful for something. So if we appreciate Jesus dying for us, we both recognize the incredible nature of that sacrifice and all that it involved in heaven and on earth. And we're grateful for the immense love that God has for us that made that sacrifice happen. Sometimes we can give thanks to God on a superficial level, almost being complacent about the miraculous nature of his blessings on us. And if that's the case, we can sometimes miss the blessings that come from really understanding the full worth of the gift that we've been given. So, next slide, please. We're going to take a moment to prayerfully consider something we want to thank God for, and importantly, why we appreciate it. We've had some worship this morning that maybe has helped you into that, um, my most special assistant, um, that was a nod and a wink, uh, is going to pass out some pens and paper that look very similar to the slide that you can see on the screen. Maybe Chantel, could you help him do one side and Rick, that would be super. I did say this was an interactive session. There's no sitting back on your laurels. Let's go. Let's go. So at the top of the slide, I've put some examples of uh, topics that we've covered off. Um, that may prompt you in your thought process. Um, we've got some pens to go out as well. Uh, that will maybe help if you haven't got one. So we're just going to take a minute or two to reflect on this. Now, you might have something else that you're thankful for. It may not be an aspect of Jesus this time around. Um, well, that's okay. It might be something else that you want to put on there. I think we're just going to play a little bit of music uh, while that's going on. Thanks, Josh. So the example I used was, I thank you, Jesus, for being the good shepherd. 
And then the wise were, I thank you that you saw the whole of my life before I was born and chose me. Thank you that you want to walk alongside me every day. Thank you for your faithfulness in your love for me. That came from a good shepherd. Thanks, Josh. Um, hopefully you've had a few uh, moments there to consider um, prayerfully something to be thankful for and why it's important to you. Um, does anybody want to share? If not, that's fine. Yeah, Denise, I'll give you a microphone. Josh, that one. So, um, what are you thankful for today? And the one that, uh, that strikes me and always does in my life is Jesus is our home. And uh, I'm thankful specifically for that. Because I don't know whether you do this when you get in from work or a long day and you get home and everything just goes, uh, it just relax into your home. And that's how I always feel when I'm, in Jesus' presence, I relax into my home and I always feel that there's a sense of peace and rest and security and belonging there and I'm really grateful for that. Amen. Thank you, Denise. Um, for the meaning of Jesus, um, a new beginning, what are you thankful for today? Um, a new creation in Christ. And also for, um, for, for prayer, where yesterday I, see, I seen this guy when I was doing a job and I prayed that I'd be able to speak to him when he was talking to me. And um, he started speaking to me, but he was Brazilian. He was Brazilian. And um, the next thing is um, he asked me what I was doing and if there was any more furniture to give away. And I asked the person who I was doing the job for, have you got any more furniture for this guy who's Brazilian? And he went, yeah, I have got two cupboards. So the Brazilian guy said, oh, thank you so much. And then I seen the guy, the Brazilian guy, and I said to myself, I'm sure he's a Christian, this guy. Mm. So I asked him, I said, are you a Christian? He went, yeah, Jesus. And I said to him, come to my church tomorrow. He said, okay. And here he is there, the family hey. of Brazilians there today. 
<laughs> I want one more. There you go. Right, I'm not going to talk as long as Peter, but um, <laughs> so I'm thankful for all things provided to me in life, um, and I'm really thankful for this because I often forget how looked after by God I am. Um, and it often slips my mind, but everything is via his plan for me, and it's yeah. important that I give thanks to him for that. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Okay, let's do it. There's always time to give thanks. <laughs> Lynn had a handle first. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to be thankful for being chosen by Jesus in a family that don't know Jesus. I don't know why me, but thank you, Jesus, for that. I'm thankful specifically because I see the pain and the hopelessness of some of my family members from the circumstances that they have in this yeah. world, um, and they have no peace, and I know I can go to Jesus Amen. and be peaceful. Amen. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I'm just grateful for being born in this country uh, where we're free to praise Jesus and free to worship him and I'm also um, grateful for um, being born to my parents who looked after me and fed me and clothed me yeah. and I believe that Jesus even though I wasn't a believer in Jesus for a long time I believe he looked after me all my life mm -hmm. until I found him and he found me Amen. thank you Amen. thank you Yes. Uh, well, I have three words in the Bible that is very, very germane to my life. And those are mercy, mm -hmm. grace, and favor. Um, this, according to the Bible, uh, it says that uh, we are saved by his grace. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time I look at the meaning of grace, it looks like a, what we call a prerogative uh, action of Jesus, of God. We don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. We just got it by. Mm -hmm. I don't know another term to use for grace, by grace. Mm -hmm. So it's so important for me, whatever I achieve, either in life or my salvation, that I'm very sure that it's very sure that I got it by grace, that Amen. I don't deserve it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. All right. So, second point the how. And um, I think we do understand why we need to be grateful. So let's think about this second question then. How do we foster this attitude of gratitude? I like the number three. There's three Ps that I pull out here. Um, prayer, practice, and perseverance. So we have to start with prayer because that will help us to hear from God. It will connect us to Jesus and bring our focus onto him rather than any other distractions. We know that prayer is the foundation of our relationship with Jesus as an ongoing way to get to know him better. And there's some guidance about from Paul um, about how we can do this in our daily lives um, in his letter to the Ephesians chapter five. And actually I think after Vernon read Psalm 100, there's some shades of that as well. So uh, from Ephesians then, to be very careful then how you live not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What great instructions. Then on to the second P of practice. So as Christians, we can actively work on thankfulness by practicing our attitude of gratitude through thanking God for the many little things in life as well as the bigger prayer answers. It might be appreciating the food on our table, the clothes we can wear, the warm weather for a picnic, or the company of friends, or the love of family, or the fellowship of others. There are so many opportunities to be thankful because we know that we are deeply loved by an almighty God 
who delights in providing us with our needs, even when we don't know what we need, and for blessing us with much, much more. And this can change the balance of our prayers between asking God and thanking God. So just think for a moment how many times in a week you would ask God for something and how many times you thank God. That's not a condemnation, but more an encouragement that we're in a relationship with a living Lord who knows the journey that we are on and that will lead us then into the third P of perseverance. So our attitude of gratitude needs our time and attention to keep it healthy and alive. And this will need us to persevere with it. There will always be obstacles in life um, that can get put in the way, but by taking a moment in prayer to ask God to show us something, by practicing what we can appreciate and why we can appreciate, and then by doing this over and over again, we can make it a habit of our walk with Jesus. Well, let's go back to scripture. And thankfulness is mentioned 73 times in the New Testament and 20 times in the Gospels. There are seven specific times when Jesus gives thanks, and here they are. So the first one in Matthew 11, verse 25. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. He's thanking God for sharing his presence with us. And again, this was repeated in Luke 10, verse 21. And then in Matthew 15, verse 36, a story that I'm sure we're familiar with. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. And again, this story is repeated in John 6, verse 11. Skipping ahead to John 11, verse 41. So the context behind this is that Jesus has been told that Lazarus has died and Jesus has then made his way to the tomb with Mary and some other people. Jesus has told them to take away the stone and in verse 41 we read, so they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you. And then look at Luke 22. We've probably got the best known examples and ones that we repeat every month in our communion meetings. Verse 17, after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. And in verse 19, he took bread he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Such powerful reminders of what Jesus has done. So from these examples of what Jesus was thankful for, we can be thankful that we know Jesus as our savior. We can be thankful for the abundant daily provision and blessings which come from God. We can be thankful that God hears us every time we pray regardless of what time of day or night that is. And we can be thankful of all the plans God has for us in our lives, both the pleasant times and maybe the harder ones as well. So I'm just going to give you another minute to go back to the sheet, maybe to add something else, maybe to focus more on one aspect, um, maybe to think about something that was starting to come through your mind before, maybe God's prompted you while we've been sitting here uh, about a situation that you've thought of as not being a great situation, but maybe there is thanks to be had in that. I spent um, about six months in New Brighton, Morrison's, going through possibly the hardest time I have ever had in 32 years as a retailer. It tested me in so, so many ways. And to be frank, at times it nearly broke me. And the only reason that it didn't was because of Jesus. I'm putting my every trust in him. I did it in his strength, not in my own. And now, six years later, I can actually be thankful that I went through that. One, because I was that person that he chose to be in that situation. And two, the strength that I had in that situation 
has given me resilience that I would never have had otherwise. And I thank God for that, even though at the time that really didn't seem to be the right thing for me to be thankful for. So maybe just let's uh, play a little bit of music again and we'll just take a minute uh, to think about our own situations. I was enjoying that, Josh. I was thinking we could just listen to a little bit more of it. That's okay. There's still, you can't see it from there, Josh, but the, the hum of like activity that's going on, I'm, I'm just getting that. I'm just getting it. People prayerfully considering their thanks. Um, so we'll let just that run for a minute. Okay, fantastic. Um, again, do we have anybody who wants to share anything? So, Jen, I'll come to you in one second. Did you? I'll let you share that. <laughs> Chantal? Okay, um, Rick put this as well, so I, can, I feel free to share it. Um, I'm grateful for the time that I had breast cancer, which sounds really weird. Mm. <laughs> But I'm really grateful because it really taught me, uh, taught us to really lean on God. And I think some of the um, scriptures in the Bible as well are much more meaningful to me now. And I knew the truth of it rather than it's just words in the Bible. Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, I, it taught me a lot to be mm. there to kind of be humble that I can't do things on my own strength mm. and that I'm not in control. And the cancer wasn't in control either, but God's in control as Amen. well. So we learned as a family, I think God really is amazing Amen. in that time. Amen. Thank you. Right, Jen, I'm going to come over this way. No, I'm going to go around this way. Okay. Jen, I've got a microphone there. Okay. <coughs> um, I'm really grateful to God um, for um the time that or the few years that i was at daisy and christopher pk in liverpool um and i was very very unhappy there um with um not being appreciated and you know for everything that i had done but if i hadn't gone through that i wouldn't have met um charlie lansborough who would have who showed me that, that God has a plan for me. Amen. And so I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. 
So what comes from it then, this attitude of gratitude? Um, what will happen if we have and practice it? Well, I think the good news is, as always, that we will be blessed and the glory of God will be revealed. By acknowledging and appreciating that God is ultimately and completely with us, by thanking him for what we've been given, I think we can find contentment rather than resentment. And through contentment, we can find joy and peace through the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, which God has sent to us. In Romans 14, verse 17, Paul writes, For the kingdom of God is not just a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So our spiritual gratitude will further God's kingdom where we are. It will be a stark contrast to the world's dissatisfaction with life. And it will be the rock that we can stand on when times are hard. Because as we've accepted, life is not always a bunch of flowers or a picnic in the sun. We are not immune as Christians to the trials and tribulations of living in a fallen world. But our appreciation can give glory to God if we recognize the opportunity tough times give us to depend on him more, to discover Jesus' strength in our weakness, and to remember his presence in every situation we are in. By finding reasons to praise God in the middle of the storm, we put him back in the center of our lives and spirit. Habakkuk the prophet, even in suffering, calls us to declare to those around us, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. They are powerful, powerful words. Let's soak them up. Even in suffering, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. He's claiming the promise that God will be with him in every situation. He's helping his spirit to open up to the joy that will come from praising God, regardless of what he is facing. So our godly gratitude in all things strengthens our relationship with Jesus, deepens our faith, and allows the Holy Spirit to show us God's provision for every part of our lives. Let's take another example. Let's look at Psalm 57. So we think this was written by David when he fled from Saul into a cave. So Saul was out to get David. He was out to get him with his army. He was out to kill him. In short, it wasn't a great situation for David to be in. You can imagine that thankfulness would not be a normal response, sitting in a cave, fearful for your life. And David says, my soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. It's not a great set of circumstances to be in. And maybe you might feel that you're in a cave. Are you surrounded? Do you feel like you're surrounded by people who can harm you physically or with the words that they say? People looking to take from you as a lion who prowls around looking for the next meal. But here's where David veers away from being stuck in that situation. He prays this next line twice, once in the middle, once at the end. He says, be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. David is declaring this, not just to his, himself, but to God. He wants God to be exalted in his own personal circumstances. He appreciates that only God is truly worthy to be exalted over everything on earth. Even though David was literally in his cave, his spirit was free to glorify God above everything he is facing. And even though at that time, David isn't sitting on the throne that God promised him, he is still able to praise God thankfully. And this is what David then says, my heart, O oh God, is steadfast, strong. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, my soul. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Amen. Okay, so we started today with giving thanks to our volunteers as an example of an attitude of gratitude, and then we've talked about and thought about 
um, what we have to be thankful to God for in our own lives. We asked three questions, which hopefully have answered. So I asked why we have it as a believer. We saw our appreciation of who Jesus is and what God has done, is doing, and will do in our lives can give us encouragement, peace, and contentment, and can banish away any ungratefulness. Secondly, I asked how we can develop it, and we saw through Jesus' uh, Jesus's example in prayer, practice, and perseverance that we will be able to be thankful in our relationship and walk with Jesus, giving glory to God in all circumstances. And then I asked what will come from it, and I believe that's a deeper relationship with Jesus, a greater understanding of the love God has for us, and an awareness that through the Holy Spirit, we can be thankful for all things. Amen. All right, we've already spent some time sharpening our spiritual swords. We're practicing our reasons to be thankful. So we're going to take a moment more to respond to what God is laying on our hearts during our final song of worship. Um, we can take the opportunity maybe to thank him in a way that you haven't done before. Um, maybe you want to share your thanks with somebody else, uh, which might help their faith as well as yours. So if we can stand now and we'll pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you now. We thank you that you gave up heaven for us. You lived a life on earth as one of us and suffered a cruel death for us. You conquered death for us and want a relationship with us for eternity, forever. We praise you for your faithfulness to us and for sending the Holy Spirit that is always with us. We thank you for choosing us to be your kingdom people wherever we are and whatever we face. Help us now to appreciate who you truly are more and more every day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.